a um, rich man was determined to give his mother a great birthday gift. And he'd been looking around what he might be able to do. He wanted it to outshine all the others. And so he read about this bird that had a vocabulary of 4,000 words. That's huge vocabulary. And it actually could speak several different languages with some of those words. And then it actually could sing three operas. So he bought the bird. It cost him $50,000. He had it shipped to his mother, and he didn't hear anything. A couple of days, he called her, making sure that she had received it, and she, he said to her, well, what did you think of the bird? And she said, oh, it was delicious. <laughs> That's wasted. That's the idea. Corinthians started believing that there was no resurrection. Strange thing to go to, but it's not uncommon that that same thinking happens today. There are people who believe that old view. It's actually an old view, not a new view. An old view was that the body was worthless. When you die, your body will just rot away. It doesn't matter what happens to the body. It's evil anyway, so after death, the only thing that lives is the soul. And so because we're spirits in the next world, there's no discussion of a body. The problem with that was it's just simply not true. And Paul uh, counters that argument with a couple of things. One, he says that if that's really true, then why did Jesus rise from the dead? In fact, if it's really true, Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Not only is that the case, but if that's really true, then the gospel is not true. And so you've believed a lie. And if the gospel is not really true, then you're still in your sins. So to believe that there's no actual body, re bodily resurrection is to really nullify the entire scriptures and everything that we say we believe and do. So it's actually quite serious to say that I don't really believe the body will rise from the dead. More than that, it suggests that Jesus himself not only was a liar, but he wasted his life. And Paul not only was a liar, but he wasted his life. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19, in that discussion, Paul says this, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, if that ends up being true, then we are of all men the most pitiable. Now, that suggests something. And let me talk to you just a second about that. The gospel had made a huge impact upon Paul. Listen to what had happened. One thing you know, that Paul had apparently been raised by rather wealthy parents. He had stuff. He no longer had that. He would had to give that up. More than that, he was raised kind of, you might say, Ivy League. He was like the, the best of the best education. That value was gone now because he was no longer living the Jew the Jewish lifestyle. And he had dual citizenship. He was both uh, a citizen of Israel and he was a citizen of Rome, which meant he could travel worldwide without any problem at all and spend all of his wealth doing that kind of thing. That was all pretty much gone. And it was worse. He not only wasted that, but he wasted his life if what he believed was not true. It says in 1 Corinthians 11, in labors abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison frequent, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren, in weariness and toils, and sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and cold and nakedness. Hmm. There are only two possible conclusions you can draw about Paul and Jesus and us. On the one hand, Paul's life was so changed by the gospel of Jesus that if the gospel of Jesus is not true, he should be pitied. 
as a life wasted. Why do that to yourself? Why let it cost you anything? On the other hand, Paul's life was so changed by the gospel of Jesus that if it's true, then Paul should be praised and he should be imitated because his life was well lived beyond measure almost. Well done, Paul. There's an old saying that goes something like this. Some people die in ashes. Some people die in flames. Some people die inch by inch playing silly little games. On the one hand, what's the application for you and me? On the one hand, for us, the question is, has the gospel made a difference in us so much so that if it turned out to not be true, we've wasted our lives. Now think on that just a second. If it were not to be true, will you have wasted your life or would your life be about the way it is now? On the other hand, if it turns out true, then the worldly people of this world have wasted their entire existence. So it's one or the other. Either you are really dedicated and it's made such an impact upon your life that it could be said, what a waste, if it turns out to not be true. But if it is true, we could say it about everybody that's not sitting here tonight. What a waste. We could say it about everybody that doesn't give their life in any way to the Lord. What a waste. Or you can say, well, he was wealthy. Who cares? What a waste. You can say he was brilliant. Who cares? What a waste. But if it hasn't made an impact upon you, and you're not really all that different than you would have been, had you not known Jesus, then I'd have to say, what a waste. What a waste. Charles Francis Adams, in the 19th century, he was a political figure and a diplomat, and he kept a diary of everything he did. I don't do that, but he did. One day he makes this entry. It says this, went fishing with my son today, a day wasted. His son, Brooke Adams, actually kept a diary as well. On that same day, he made a note. This is what it says, and you can actually read his diary. We don't actually have the other one. We only have to tell about that. But we actually have Brooke Adams' diary, and he said this about that same day, and he didn't know what his father had written at the time. Went fishing with my father, the most wonderful day of my life. In one man's mind... It was totally a waste. In the other man's mind, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to him. That's the gospel. It should be the case with you. Either your life is absolutely wasted if it's not true, or everybody else's life is absolutely wasted if it is true. So the question is, will you allow the gospel to have that much of an impact? I know this is an impact being on Sunday night. That's a small impact. What are you going to do, watch TV? Aren't you all about sick of it? What are you going to do, play on the Internet? I'm about sick of it. Oh, I'm going to do Facebook. I'm tired of that too. I'm going to do Twitter. Sick of it. What are you not sick of? If there's nothing out there that's that interesting. Sitting at home and twiddling your fingers and looking at the wife and going, what are we going to eat? I'm sick of eating. I mean, it's, it's got to be more, right? What life is is nothing but a waste if there isn't a Jesus. What a waste. If you've been wasting it, I want to give you an opportunity to keep it from being wasted. If you would repent of your sins, confess the name of Christ, and be baptized, your life will not be wasted. It'll be the greatest investment you've ever made. Won't you come if you need to while we stand and while we sing?